Good morning, friends, and happy Monday. Uh, what was I going to do? I was going to kick off another reading vlog. Um, I wasn't going to vlog this week, but I was also supposed to film this weekend, and I didn't. So you guys are getting a vlog this week. <laughs> but I am in the middle of like a couple of books that, well, one of them I'm really, really loving, like five star feels kind of thing. Mm, I don't know. Um, and the other one less so. And then also I have another book that I have to have to pick up soon. Anyway, so here's what I'm tackling this week. First book I'm currently reading is The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. This is the, so let me backtrack a bit. The reason why I'm reading this is because I, like an idiot, requested the second book on NetGalley without having read the first one. Like, why would I do that? But like I did. And then I got approved for the second book. And then I realized it comes out in like two weeks or like three weeks or something stupid. And I was like, I played myself. But then I was like, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. And then I I had just bought the ebook recently because um, it was on sale. And I looked at the ebook. I was like, it's 24 chapters. It's fine. Each chapter is like 30 fucking pages at least. And so like, it's a really long book. Uh, so I really played myself, but I am really, really loving it. So did I really play myself? I'm not really sure. But basically this is a kind of like Venetian inspired fantasy, I want to say. And in this book, we're following our main character, Ren. She is a kind of like a street rat and she is trying to con her way into becoming a member of like this noble house. And it's just such an interesting premise. And to be honest, it reads very much like a TV show in that like, it's like just drama, like a lot of family drama, a lot of like family politics. There isn't like a very structured plot, but there's just like stuff going on, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but for me to tell you what stuff is going on, I feel like would venture into like spoiler territory, but I really like it. The magic system is like very soft, but it's almost like akin to um, kind of like old, what old tiny like science would have been. Um, so things like alchemy. Um, so it's like definitely like full metal alchemist vibes. They do like transmutations. They have like the circle, they draw the circles and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there's also like this tarot card magic type thing. And there's like different types of magic within the system as well. Um, and then there's like astrology and like people who read birth charts and stuff. Um, it's really cool. And then there's also this like whole drug ring situation situation. So far I'm loving it. Uh, stakes are very high in this book. At first I was like, I'm just enjoying my ride. You know, like this is fun. And then like shit hit the fan. And I was like, I love this book. I love this book. This is amazing. Um, and so I am 65% of the way through that. Um, so I'm hoping to finish that this week so that I can move on to the second book and give myself time to finish that. But the other book I really have to get to is The Bone Shard Emperor, which comes out tomorrow. So I'm probably going to pick up the audiobook tonight and then start the audiobook for that and see how far I get in. I'm going into it hopeful, but a little bit skeptical. I feel like this series has a lot of rave reviews, but I read like chapter one of the arc I got and I just like was reminded of how much I don't really love Andrea Stewart's writing. I feel like Andrea Stewart's writing to me is very similar to someone like a TJ Klune or a Ridge Pecco where like I just don't vibe with their writing style at all. Like it's, it's completely like personal thing but like I just I read it and I find it so difficult to comprehend the words on the page. Like it just something about it I just don't I don't enjoy and I also very distinctly do not enjoy the switching perspective so if you've read um the bone shard daughter you'll know that some of the perspectives are written in first person and the other ones are written in third person and I just don't I don't like it I don't <laughs> First of all, multi POV in first person. You all know how I feel about that by now. I don't like it at all. But in like, I just don't, I don't understand the like switching perspectives. Like I just don't, I don't get it. I feel like if you're gonna do that, it has to make sense. Like there has to be a reason for it. So for example, in like the fifth season and the Broken Earth trilogy in general, there are some chapters and some POVs that are written in second person and some that are written in first person, etc, etc. But there's a very distinct reason for that. And I feel like if there was a reason for it in this series, I feel like it should have been revealed by the end of book one and it wasn't. And I just don't, I don't care for it personally. 
Um, but I'm hopeful for the second book. A lot of people said it was better than the first one. And again, the first book was her debut novel. So like, there is room for improvement for sure. Um, but I'm gonna pick up the audiobook because right now, right now I have I'm back into my switch. Okay, I started the game Spiritfarer, which is honestly the cutest fucking game I've ever seen in my life. I, it's funny because like this is actually one of the games that convinced me to get the Switch to begin with. But the problem with these types of games, so it was like this game and Breath of the Wild. And the problem with these games is like I didn't play them to start with because like I was like, what if I hate them? And so I just never started them. I got them and I never started them. <laughs> um, but I finally started Spiritfarer and I freaking love it. It is so adorable. It is the prettiest game I have ever seen in my life. It is just like so calming and wholesome. But yeah, normally I listen to an audiobook when I'm playing a game. I also started Dragon Quest Builders um, too, just the demo of it, just because I wanted to see if it goes on sale on Black Friday, I might get it. And I wanted to see if I was like enjoying it before I bought it. I did also start on audio last night, which I'm hoping to finish tonight or get a good chunk of the way through before I start Bone Shard Emperor. Um, I'm 35% of the way through The Calculating Stars by Mary Robinette Kowal. And like, I picked this up because first of all, my friends who have read it really love it. Uh, Rue gave it five stars, I think. Katie also gave it like 4.5 or five stars. Like they all like loved this book. Um, and this is like a historical sci-fi. It's set around the backdrop of like the space race, but like the, the, the setup is like a little bit different than like the space race here but it's, it's that time period so like the post-world war ii thing the setup of this book is that like there was a meteorite that hit like washington what is it, the west coast of the usa um and absolutely like, just like obliterated the earth but also like set off a, a series of like events and like climate change that will make earth uninhabitable um and so the space race is now necessary for human survival and we're following our main character who is like in the u.s she's a former like wasp pilot i don't know what wasp stands for to be honest but she's a former pilot she's like you know women in stem the whole thing is like a women in stem book and that's why i picked it up because after reading ladies guide to celestial mechanics i've been in like a historical women in stem mood and so i thought this would be the perfect book and i feel like those themes are done well what i do like is that they also address like racism at the time and also our main character is Jewish so there's that added layer of like intersectionality there um so I do really enjoy that um however I just like don't feel connected to these characters at all and like I feel like for a story like this I just need to feel connected but I do really like the themes and I'm only 35% of the way in so like we'll see the audiobook is a little questionable I'm not gonna lie so the author narrates her own audiobook which I'm a little iffy about for fiction. A couple of things. First of all, the sex scenes are very cringy. Like there's a lot of like space puns and innuendos. And like, I can see why maybe like if I read it physically, I would find them like a little funny. But like on audio, they're just very awkward because like she narrates them with like a lot of like heavy breathing and stuff. And it's just like, it's just very cringy. It's very cringy. It's not, it's not good. And also one of her teammates, um, the main character's teammates, is Taiwanese and the accent that she puts on for her is like very questionable, I'm not gonna lie. But um, other than that, I am enjoying the book. Like it's a good book for me to have in the background while I play my Switch games. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. It's gonna be a lot of like audio booking. But anyway, it's time for me to go to work. So I'm gonna go to work um, and I will check in with you guys a little bit later. Good morning, friends. Happy Tuesday. Um, I did not get as much read last night as I had hoped to, but I did finish the Calculating Stars. I bought Minecraft <laughs> to play because I was playing Dragon Quest Builders and I was really enjoying like the like mining and building aspects, but I really hated the storyline. Like, the, like, why did the NPCs talk so much? Like, I don't, I don't want them to talk so much. Anyway, so then I heard that like Minecraft and Dragon Quest Builders have like very similar building aspects. Um, and so I downloaded Minecraft, but uh, then I got motion sickness because A, I forget how much I get motion sick when I play like on handheld, like those types of games with like the moving camera, especially first persons. And then also, 
I didn't realize you could turn off that like violent head bobbing in Minecraft and now I have and it's a lot better but like I didn't realize that for like the hour and a half that I played and then I felt so sick afterwards um but in that hour and a half I did finish <laughs> the calculating stars um and I I felt very like neutral about this book so I gave it a 2.5 rating like I neither disliked nor liked this like I felt very whatever and I think part of it is because I went in with like quite high expectations not only because the friends that I know of that have read it rated it very very highly but also it's won like a lot of awards like it won the Hugo award it won a Nebula award and I just thought it was gonna be better <laughs> um, I felt very neutral about it. It's definitely more of like a historical fiction or like an alternative history type of book than a sci-fi. It's still sci-fi obviously but it, it definitely leans more heavily on the historical fiction side and I do wonder if that's maybe like part of where I went wrong is that like I don't really know much about the space race. I don't really I'm not that invested in like spacey things and like astronauts. Like I know a lot of people are really into that kind of stuff but like I'm just I've never I'm just like I've never been one of those people so I don't really know that much about like the female astronauts and mathematicians at that t in that time period. I know they exist and I know that like history has erased a lot of them but I just like I don't <laughs> I don't know much about it. Maybe that's part of why I like didn't love this book and I didn't feel like emotionally attached to this book. I did really like um, the mental health rep in this. I thought it was like definitely very front and center. And there were a lot of things that like Elma experienced that like I related to, particularly around her and how she felt around her career. Um, so at the beginning, she like definitely feels uncomfortable by being called like Lady Astronaut because like she's like, I'm not an astronaut. I just, you know, I'm a mathematician. I just like do calculations about space and I've, and she's like, I've never been to space. So I don't want to call myself an astronaut. Um, but then like throughout the story, you see her slowly like accepting that title and you see her like, you know, struggling with her anxiety around the pressure on her to, to become greater than she perhaps feels she might be. But then also like, she also knows that she's a very capable person and like people are underestimating her. Like it's so funny because like I actually tweeted this like last week or something where I was like I feel like people are constantly like overestimating what I can do or underestimating me and there's no in between. Like I, I all I want is to like meet expectations and that's just not a thing apparently. Um, and so I feel like that like that aspect of Elma's character I really related to. But other than that, like I just didn't really feel like emotionally and like viscerally like attached to any of the characters. I feel like while I appreciated the diversity of the cast of characters and also like the conversations surrounding intersectionality and um, I did feel like that was addressed quite well and obviously very well researched. However, I feel like because some of the side characters just lacked depth to them, like they just, a lot of the characters just didn't have a lot of depth to them. Like even, even Elma didn't really have like that much to her character beyond her, I feel like her marginalization. And I feel like a lot of the characters felt that way. Like they felt like just a sum of their marginalizations. And like I said, on one hand, I appreciate the conversations that that brought up. But on the other hand, it does kind of make them feel a little tokenized. But you know, it's it's a hard balance to strike. So I understand that. Um, where I really think I went wrong was the audiobook. I think I genuinely think the audiobook negatively impacted my enjoyment. I did not like the audiobook at all. Um, and I really think the author should have outsourced the audiobook to another narrator. Like I really think so. Um, like I know I mentioned the sex scenes being like really cringy with like heavy breathing and stuff but I feel like that's just a symptom of like the larger problem that is the audiobook as a whole was just like the, a lot of the voices that she put on were like over the top very in my opinion anyway very cringy um and I just did not enjoy it. I, I didn't think it was well done. I think the accent that she does for the Taiwanese character in particular, like I can't speak to the other ones, but the accent she does for the Taiwanese character, I don't know what accent it was, but it was not Taiwanese. It was like, honestly, it was just kind of offensive and like weird. And I just like, I did not enjoy it at all. I personally would not recommend the audiobook. <laughs> Um, but anyway, today, uh, The Bone Shred Emperor comes out today. I have not decided yet if I want to get the audiobook because I looked at the narrator list and Emily Wu Zeller is one of the narrators 
Theodore Chin, who I also don't really like, but then Natalie Nottis is the other narrator. And I like Natalie Nottis. So like, it's just like a mixed bag for me, but I don't really like two out of the three narrators. So I'm just like, mm, maybe not for me. Um, so I am going to try to read it this week, but I really also want to finish Mask of Mirrors. So my goal is to read Mask of Mirrors tonight, maybe. Oh, it's such a struggle because like, I really want to play my video games right now. Um, but Mask of Mirrors I've been reading physically and I really don't want to switch to an audiobook. Um, so I don't know what to do. So maybe I will get the Bone Chart Emperor on audio. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I gotta go to work now, but I will check in with you a little bit later. Morning friends, happy Thursday. It's so gloomy outside right now. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, it's been a night. I sound so congested, but it's already better than last night. I don't really know what happened, but my allergies just like suddenly hit me so hard last night. Um, so I just laid in bed and I actually finished reading Mask of Mirrors. Um, and I really loved it. I loved it. The ending was so explosive, so good. Um, I feel like, okay, hold on. Let me backtrack. I ended up giving this 4.5 stars. I don't think it's perfect. I think the pacing, possibly because of like the way the chapters are set up and everything, it feels like it drags on a little bit, even though there's stuff happening. Like I don't know what it is. It, it could just be me to be honest and like the long chapters, but like I did find it at times like difficult to like push through those long chapters. Like there's something about long chapters that I just like my brain is just like no. Um, but the actual content itself, like, so I said it before about this book. I feel like there's like little, very little plot and it's just like drama. You know, when you watch like a TV show and it's just like a generic TV drama and like there aren't like there's like a couple of main plot points, but not really. And like, you're mostly just following these people around as they like go about their daily lives. That's just kind of how this book feels. And I kind of love it. Like, I love it. This is kind of my, it's my cup of tea, you know? But I will say once you hit the halfway point around there, um, like shit really starts hitting the fan and it's just like one thing after the other and like it really kicks off from there. Um, so I do think this is like a pretty well balanced book in terms of plot and characters. Like I love the characters. The characters are so like this is one of those books where the characters like feel like real people. I love the dialogue between them. Like there's so much banter. Like Ren is literally shippable with like every other character in this book. Like male or female doesn't really matter. Like I love it. I love it so much. I also love Vargo. Vargo is probably my favorite character. He is like the most interesting character. His character is basically like he is not a sketchy kind of person, but he's um, a very rich man, but he is not uh, noble. He's kind of like the leader of like a gang in a, in a way. Um, and he is, he's just like a really fascinating character. Like he is so, so interesting. Even though he's technically like a bad guy, like you can't help but like really like him. Like he's just so fascinating. Um, what else can I say about this book that is like non-spoilery? Honestly, like, this book is just like really good. It's like really, really well done. And like, I really, really liked it. And the writing is like quite well done. Like I, if you didn't tell me this was two authors, like I would not have known. Like it doesn't feel disjointed in any way. I really, I really enjoyed this book. I went straight into The Liar's Knot last night, which is the second book. Um, and I didn't, I didn't actually get anywhere. I just read the recap because, which first of all, more books, especially like fantasy books need to do this. They need to add recaps for like the previous books in their books. So I really like that the sequel has a recap at the beginning, but the recap was really good for me because I was like, this is a bit of a sanity check right like did I actually understand the book I just read and so I got through that and then I fell asleep because I also like played a bit of Spirit Fair last night oh, what a great game what a great game anyway basically if I were gonna pitch this book to you I feel like it's like a combination of some of the best parts of like Foundry Side Medici Masters of Florence which I don't know if a lot of people have watched that show but I love that show um and like Full Metal Alchemist I just feel like it has like elements of all three that I really love but yeah that was Mask of Mirrors really like that 4.5 stars I rounded it up to five on Goodreads I thought about rounding down but then I was like you know what like 
why am I being so stingy? Like, why am I falling back into this habit of being stingy with my stars? Like, I don't know. I don't understand. Um, anyway, I'm going to continue on with the liars. Not tonight. I'm basically going to be home for like a lot of today and tomorrow. Um, because I work in e-commerce and I work in tech so like it's like the busiest weekend of the entire year right now um so I'm on call like tomorrow night so I definitely won't be going anywhere I'll probably be ordering ordering like a pizza about the bone shard emperor I did put it on hold at the library for the audiobook um and I am first in line um for hold so I should get it soon so that's when I'll start it I didn't really want to spend an audible credit on it because I know I'm not gonna love the audiobook because it's two like two out of the three narrators I don't like and I am at the front of the line so I figured I'll just wait till then um and then just kind of like binge the audiobook over the weekend or something um while I play switch games I guess that's it for this check-in I'll probably check in when I have some more updates or something I don't really know uh I can't think straight because all I can think about is my like congested nose so anyway I'm gonna sign off now I gotta go to work um and I will see you guys in a bit Hello friends, we're in my kitchen. Ignore the mess. It's actually disgusting. Don't judge me. But I'm super excited because I woke up this morning, early this morning, and I impulse purchased a soda stream. Isn't that exciting? I've wanted one for years and I've just never bought one because I was just kind of like, oh, how much sparkling water can I drink? But honestly, whatever. Fuck it. Um, the other update is that Selling Sunset is back on Netflix. And if you didn't know, that's my favorite show. And so will I be getting much reading done today? Unsure. Unsure. Oh my god. Why is it so huge? Like, the bottle of water is not that big. Also, do I need like an extra one of these? If you have a soda stream, let me know. It's so beautiful. Look at it. I got the white one. I really like the baby blue one, but first of all, my store locally did not have the baby blue one. Also, all of my like drink appliances are white, so I thought the white would go well. But look at my little drink station. It's so cute. I got my little coffee maker that I got recently earlier this year. And then I have my water boiler. And now I have my soda stream. It's so cute. Anyway, that was my update. Just thought I would, you know show you guys my soda stream. I'm just so excited about it. I needed to share with someone. Anyway, I will check in when I've actually read something, maybe, potentially. Hello friends and happy Friday. Happy Black Friday. I hope you all found some good deals to purchase. Um, I shockingly didn't buy any books this year. Who even am I? That being said, I have really like calmed down on my book buying, I feel in the last like month or so. But also I picked up a few Switch games because I have no self-control. And also I am having like a Switch week, you know? Sometimes I go through weeks where I'm like, I play one game and then I'm like, I'm, I'm a gamer now, apparently. I bought last night Skyrim, even though I am the worst gamer in the whole world. Um, but the reason is I somehow got it in my head yesterday that I really wanted to play a high fantasy RPG. And then I saw Skyrim on sale and I was like, you know what, should I just get Skyrim? And then I spent like hours and hours and hours, like literally hours after work, just watching like Skyrim videos. And then I was trying to decide between Skyrim and Dragon's Dogma, but then apparently Dragon's Dogma is like really difficult. And so like, I just didn't, I didn't get that one. Also in my head, I was like, they're both half off, but Skyrim is like double the price of the other game normally. So like, it's just a better deal. Anyway, so I bought Skyrim. I've never played Skyrim in my life. And so like, I'm really excited to play. I played a little bit last night. I got through like the tutorial bit basically. Um, and I'm really excited to continue playing. So basically I shan't be reading <laughs> for the next few days. I did start The Liar's Knot. I got through the prologue, which was very interesting. The prologue takes place like in the past and following a character that we definitely saw a lot of in book one, but um, we didn't have really like POV chapter. I mean, I guess we don't have POV chapters in this book in general, but like I can, I would have considered him like a side character in book one, like a major side character, but definitely a side character. Um, whereas I have a feeling he is going to be like the main character in book two. So I'm really excited to see that because he was one of my favorite characters. Did I say who it was? It's Vargo. Um, but yeah, we have a prequel chapter that follows Vargo in the past and I was, I'm like so intrigued now. Um, so maybe I will be reading The Liar's Knot. I'm on call and I will um, probably just like be reading or playing 
my video games until I get called in inevitably. <laughs> I mean, I hope not. It's been a pretty like touch wood, but it's been a pretty chill Black Friday, which has been very strange. Um, also, I did get the Bone Chart Emperor in from the library, the audiobook. So I probably will also start that while I play like Spirit Fair or, or like one of my other games. I really want to start. So I also bought in case anyone was wondering what I got on my Switch the last few days. I also got um, Cozy Grove, which I've been dying to try out for a while now. Um, it looks really cute. And the concept of it is reminds me a lot of Spiritfarer as well. Like it kind of feels like Spiritfarer like storyline, but like Animal Crossing-esque gameplay. Not that I played Animal Crossing, it just sounds a lot like that, you know? Um, and I also got Minecraft, as you all know already. So I'll be playing one of those while I get a head start on um, the Bone Shard Emperor. Um, but you'll have to, I guess, stay tuned for my thoughts on that later, I guess. <laughs> Probably in a recent reads at this point, or maybe another reading vlog. I don't know. But yeah, that is it for today. That is it for this week and this vlog. If you stuck around till the end, as always, I super appreciate it. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you can't think of anything, just leave me a um, game emoji. Is there, is there like a controller emoji, right? Something like that. I don't know, whatever. You decide. <laughs> um, and if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.